We have seen it over the past week. Young people in America are fired up over abortion and guns. And according to new polling, Gen Z cares about a whole lot of other issues, too. Back with us tonight, my dear friend John Della Volpe, director of polling at the Harvard Kennedy School Institute of Politics and author of Fight, How Gen Z is Channeling Their Fear and Passion to Save America, which is out in paperback today. And Victor, she is here, iGen Politics podcast co-host and the youngest elected delegate for Joe Biden in 2020. John, historically, that younger generation they're, they've always been the ones who are amped up. They're protesting. Think back to the 1960s. They're the ones who activate, who organize. But today, are young people today different? Are they so fired up about climate, abortion, guns, that could they be a singular, powerful voting block on the left the way that gun enthusiasts and, and evangelicals are on the right? I think that's... Without a question, that's happening, Stephanie. This is the now fourth election cycle in a row where we saw a combination of Gen Z and millennials, a voting bloc that will be 40% of the 2024 electorate, overwhelmingly vote for Democrats and turn out at numbers that no previous generation, when they were their age, voted. So when we were in our teens and 20s, we voted at roughly half a level as young people today. So this is a renaissance, and, 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 and what we're seeing is younger people are voting because their life depends upon it. It's in their own self-defense. And I think the news this past week of Wisconsin was so moving because this is an off-off-year election, you know, for a state Supreme Court seat, and young people just absolutely just killed it. They just killed it. Who are you polling, right? People read your name and they see Harvard and they think, oh, he's just talking to those liberal elite kids on those fancy campuses. Yeah. Who are you asking these questions to? So, so I actually did some calculate. Last year, we spoke to 100,000 young Americans. Where? You know, um, across every single state and every single demographic group within that, if they're in English, Spanish, rural America, yeah. everywhere um, that we can, and dozens and dozens of focus groups. So virtually... Every single state, we talk to uh, folks on a regular basis, Trump voters, conservatives, Democrats, liberals, all of them. Victor, I said it a moment ago, you were Joe Biden's youngest delegate talking to your generation. That, of course, was before Roe was overturned. It was before the last election. Are you seeing a shift now in younger voters, their enthusiasm, their passion, their anger? 100%. And I can tell you that I saw a remarkable shift after what happened in Tennessee last week when you had the two youngest uh, black members of the Tennessee state legislature literally get expelled simply for protesting with young people about uh, gun violence. And young people see this clearly. We are seeing what's happening with this Republican Party. You mentioned that we were, you know, we paid attention when Dobbs fell. We're paying attention now more than ever before. The number of young people who I've heard from who have told me that what they're, you know, what they're seeing in Tennessee right now is concerning is more than I've ever seen before. Young people are paying attention. I think Republicans in Tennessee and also, frankly, across the country are unleashing something that they are going to regret come 2024 because a lot of those young people who you're, you're seeing protesting on the streets in Nashville, who you're seeing raise their voices and speak out against Republicans are the same ones that are going to be first-time voters in 2024. Those are the people that are going to be voting for Democrats and rejecting this kind of extremism and fascism being pushed by the Republican Party across the country. Do Republicans realize this? <laughs> they, they, they. I don't know if they do, Stephanie, because in the last couple of weeks, you know, Scott Walker, you know, talked about the day after Wisconsin. He talked about we need to turn them right into, into, you know, talk about the indoctrination mm -hmm. supposedly that's been going on. You know, other people, Kelly and Conway, is talking about changing the messaging. This isn't about messaging. It's not about education. It's about values. Yeah. And what we found in this survey is that the values that roughly two thirds of this generation or generations hold are just not aligned with the current version of the MAGA, Repub MAGA Republican Party. But the hold value, on, is right? it about values or messaging, or is it about access to health care? Basic rights. Basic rights. Those are values. And before you can talk about messaging, yeah. those values need to be aligned with a, a messenger who's authentic, who's trustworthy, and then you can negotiate which word or phrases you put together for a message. But this is about freedom and rights and responsibility of individuals and in government. Victor? 
I totally agree. And I think the, the one word that John used and that was captured in his poll and also what you're seeing in Wisconsin and other states across the country is that young people care more than any other generation about values, whether it's at the workforce, in which company they, they choose to work for, or whether it's uh, in politics, in which candidates we vote for. The values for Gen Z, I think, are simple. There are, I think, for me, a few. First is we want people who will represent us in government. We want people who will listen to our voices and actually engage with us. And then the second thing is we don't want people who will tear down our rights. We want people who will protect and defend the rights that we care about, whether it's abortion rights, whether it's LGBTQ plus rights. All of those rights are things that we hold so near and dear to our hearts as Gen Zers. And so I think uh, right now, I mean, I don't know if Republicans will learn. Like John said, you're seeing Republicans sort of have a freaking out moment on, on Fox News. And I think they realize that they need young voters, but what they're doing is not working. They're attacking us. They're not listening to us. And I think it's probably smart for them politically to start doing that. Otherwise, I don't think they're going to uh, win over this generation anytime soon. But this generation, John, is not a monolith. Talk to us. There are other voters, right? Barstool Sports did not become, uh, you know, a, a, a massive media organization um, out of nowhere, right? Joe Rogan's podcast is right. followed by a whole lot of young people, and it's fair to say they, they lean more conservative. They do. This generation of those conservatives are far less likely to vote than previous generations. So one of the reasons... Say that to me again. Say that to me so, again. So you might... Those people who love listening to Joe Rogan are going, yeah, 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 but come voting day, they're sitting home. At midterms. Mm -hmm. Whether they turn out for Trump is another matter because I think they're more aligned with the personality than they are about the policy ideals. One of the reasons I think that some people thought that the youth vote was lower than some might have expected in November is because a lot of those conservatives, a lot of those Republicans, chose to stay home. But one of the interesting things is when we ask people where they get their news and information, MSNBC, cable news, NPR, podcasts, we actually ask, we ask, actually ask about Barstool Sports now. You know, close to one in five white men get their current events news from Barstool Sports, as one example. And it all started with pizza reviews. Think about that. John Delavolpe, Victor Shee, thank you both.